Hey, what is up, you CISSP wannabes? Uh, these are the IT Dojo questions of the day, where each and every day I give you not one, but two practice questions for you to study and ponder. Uh, I am Colin Weaver. Let's go ahead and get right to it. All right, here comes question number one. Uh, question number one is a non-legally binding agreement between two or more parties who agree to work together to, define, to accomplish a particular objective where the responsibilities of each party are clearly defined. That's a mouthful, isn't it? Um, what is that called? What is that type of an agreement called? Here's your choices. Go ahead and take a moment, click pause, give those a read. When you're ready, click play and we'll talk it through. Okay, from the answer choices that you've got there, the first option is contract. Um, no, a contract is actually a legally binding agreement uh, between two parties that a judge can enforce if one of the parties doesn't uh, uh, do what they agreed to do. And uh, this particular scenario is looking for something that's not legally binding. So no, it's not a contract. Okay, second option there says a gentleman's agreement. Um, although a gentleman's agreement is not legally binding, it is typically something that's just, it's, it's kind of done on a handshake, although it could be written, but they're, they're considered to be fairly informal and really focus more on the, um, uh, on the honor of the individuals that are involved. And so that's not really what we're looking for right here. Okay, the third item on the list is a service level agreement or an SLA. Uh, this is an agreement between a customer and a service provider for the provider in exchange for some sort of consideration, typically money, uh, to go in and provide a service at a particular level of quality and availability. Um, and uh, that's, that's not what we're looking for right here. Again, this is gonna be something that is, does have some legal binding to it, an SLA does. Fourth item on the list is a memorandum of understanding, an MOU. Um, that is exactly what we're looking for here because MOUs by their very nature are not meant to be legally binding, uh, but they do define a relationship that's gonna exist between two or more parties and goes in and clearly defines what the expectations of both parties are in the agreement. Um, part of the reason that MOUs are so popular is that they're not legally binding. And so it's, it's a very good way of avoiding all of the um, heavy lawyer involvement, if you will, that can occur when you deal with things that are contractual, uh, whereas an MOU allows you to basically create an agreement and get some stuff done in a, in a time frame that's going to be faster and quicker. And then the final item on the list was a treaty. A treaty is basically a contract on an international scale. Uh, it's where you're going in and creating arrangements and agreements between sovereign nations or sovereign states. Uh, and that's not what we're looking for either, again, because that is going to be something that does have some legal binding and international law. Uh, so the answer that we're looking for right here is a memorandum of understanding. All right, here comes question number two. Uh, in a public key infrastructure, a certificate revocation list is a digitally signed list of certificate serial numbers of certificates that have been revoked by a certificate authority. Now, there's more than one way for a client to check the revocation status of a certificate that has been presented to it. Of the list that you see right here, which are possibilities that can be uh, utilized? And what I want you to do is I want you to pick three of them. So go ahead and click pause, give it a read, and then afterwards we'll break each one of these choices down and talk about it. All right, first batter up on the list is an SNMP v3 query, the simple network management protocol. SNMP has nothing to do with certificates. SNMP is all about asking devices questions and getting, getting answers back. And so if you want to be able to go in and send SNMP queries to learn stuff about your devices, then that's a rock star protocol, but absolutely nothing to do with the answer choices that are here. Choice number two on the list says syslog. Uh, syslog has absolutely nothing to do with public key infrastructure. Uh, syslog is all about uh, generating system events and recording them and having a good way, way to you to go in and be able to look at what's going on with your systems, whether it's over a network or on a local system. Third item on the list is a DNS text record query. Um, directly has nothing to do with public infrastructures. Um, as a side note, there are some interesting things going on with DNS text records uh, and the use of public keys being stored there, but that's for a different topic in a different day. The next item on the list is an HTTP-based CRL distribution point. This is absolutely what we're looking for. Um, a certificate revocation list is a digitally signed list of revoked certificates uh, by their serial number, and they're typically distributed in one of two ways, either via HTTP or via LDAP. Those are the two most common ways that you'll go in and see that being done. So this is absolutely one of the ways that a, a client can get their hands on a list of revoked certificates. Next item on the list, OCSP, which stands for the Online Certificate Status Protocol. This is absolutely also all about 
uh, public infrastructures and making sure the certificates have not been revoked. Uh, OCSP utilizes a whole different approach to certificate ch uh, revocation checking compared to what CRL lists do. Um, and OCSP is definitely one of the things that we're looking for right here as far as an answer choice. Next option, SMTP, the simple mail transfer protocol, has nothing to do with uh, public key infrastructures, at least not directly. And then the very last entry on the list is an incremental CRL, um, usually known as a Delta CRL, that is issued by a certificate authority as well. Now, a Delta CRL is basically the list of certificates that have been revoked since the last base CRL was published by the certificate authority. And absolutely, that is the third one that you're looking for on this particular list. Um, what's really interesting about certificate revocation is that it, for such a seemingly simple topic, it's actually a source of tremendous amounts of discussion and debate. Uh, there are lots of links that I put down below that will go in and uh, kind of break each one of them down for you. It's, it's a really interesting topic that you should definitely give some more read to because there's more going on than what you're going to see in most CISSP texts that are out there, uh, specifically as it relates to how different browsers are approaching this. Uh, so definitely um, have a look at it. In particular, check out Google Chrome and CRL sets and look at how uh, Chrome is approaching this whole thing because uh, they're really kind of taking a, a departure from the traditional stuff that you see with uh, uh, certificate revocation lists and OCSP servers. All right, so there you have it. Two questions. First on memorandum of understanding, second on public key infrastructures. Um, I hope that you enjoyed those questions and that they were helpful for you as you continue your studies. Um, if you did like those questions, please take a moment and love on that like button. I'll appreciate that very much. And if you want to make sure that you get these questions every single day, click on the subscribe button and I will see you tomorrow.